Hi everyone! In the last video, we applied Terrigen's erosion operator to a height field that was imported from Previs or Layout. The erosion operator transformed the height field's basic shapes from the Previs geometry into a more naturalistic mountain terrain. In this video, we'll continue where we left off and explore a technique that allows us to create much finer detail in specific areas of the terrain that may have higher interest or are more visible in our shot. An important concept to introduce now is that Terrigen can stack height fields of different resolutions on top of one another. For example, our current terrain covers an area of 58,000 meters using only a height field of 2,000 data points or pixels. And while this might be fine for smaller mountains in the scene, it might not provide enough resolution for detailing the volcanic crater. So let's use a separate height field with its own 2,000 data points or pixels just for the volcano area to give us more detail to play with. Add another terrain to our project and select the volcano height field image. Now we need to add our height field modifiers, but this time let's use the node network pane. When you right click over a node in the node network pane, the resulting menu has been pre filtered for compatibility with that type of node. If you right click on the height field node, only height field operators are listed. When you select an item in the menu, a node is created and appended to the node you right clicked on. It is connected into the network automatically. Select Resize. Type in 20,000 meters to resize the height field and enable the Rescale Vertical parameter. Right click and add a vertical adjustment node as well. We will match the precise height of our 3D previous geometry by entering in the same values also used by the terrain height field. Set the highest value to 2,182 and the lowest value to negative 142. Then enable the Set Height Range checkbox and disable the other two. Finally, let's also add the Erode node just like the rest. Let's minimize the network pane and view our terrain from a top-down view. Click on the white navigation control icon at the top right of the interface to expand the controls. Click on the zoom out icon until you see the bounding box for the full terrain. Notice that the volcano height field we just loaded is at the center of the terrain and needs to be repositioned. Select the height field shader O2 node in the terrain node list and type in 16,000 meters into the position Z axis box. This will properly align the height field with the position of the volcano. It's important to check the edges around the newly added height field to see if a seam is visible due to Terrigen trying to blend the border of the height field with the surrounding terrain. When the height fields are adjacent to each other, this can be a good thing. But because the volcano height field is stacked on top of the terrain height field, we need to disable the stitchable border checkbox to eliminate the visible edges. Click on the Fractal Detail tab and disable the Fractal Detail. Let's return to our wide view of the terrain so we can adjust the erosion parameters. Just as before, we'll set the initial settings so that we only see the effects of erosion and then calculate the erosion. This time, let's render a frame to see the exact results. You may need to set your camera first by clicking the Copy This View to the Current Render Camera button at the bottom of the 3D preview pane. Click on the Renderers button on the toolbar. To render a frame, click the Render Image button or press the Ctrl and R keys on your keyboard. In the rendered image, you can see much finer erosion details. There are more erosion flows, and they're much thinner. This is due to having more data or pixel density for the area covered by the volcano height field. Now you would continue to adjust the erosion settings until you get the desired results. We've settled on these settings, and this is the rendered result. We'll save this height field as a TER file, so we don't have to keep recalculating it and reload it into the project.
As you can see, by selectively using height fields of different resolutions, we can control the levels of detail where they're needed most, and this greatly helps to optimize our project. In our next video, we'll add the fractal noise detail that we previously disabled on the height fields to add one final level of detail. We hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching. Thank you.